Hey everybody, this is Laurie Meyer from stampedgreetings.com and welcome back to our stamp club. We are a group of amazing women who get together several times a month on Zoom and share our creations and share ideas. And today I am going to be sharing a very fun, fun fold that I recently discovered on YouTube. And before I get into it, I would like to make sure that I give appropriate credit to the lady whose video I watched. Her name is Terry Gaines, T-E-R-R-I-G-A-I-N-E-S. And she's got an amazing website called Create with Terry Gaines. So Terry, thank you so much for your instructions on this fabulous design. I have used a lot of the products from the Texture Chic sweet on this card and let just let me just show you how it works you open it up and you can see why this is called a swing window fun fold because as i open this up the window moves and inside the window is a really really pretty design and i'm going to just show you at the top this is what it looks like and obviously it will stand and it, it makes a very, very nice display. I am going to show you how to replicate something that looks similar to this. But before I do that, I want to show you another design because I want to give you a couple of ideas so you don't get stuck on one design. And this is one that I made using some circle dies. It is the exact same basic paper, basic score lines. And you can see that both are A2 cards. The biggest difference, and we'll talk about this as we go through, include the dies that I use for the front and also where I put some of my paper. But I'm going to start by replicating this card. And I am really going to focus on the mechanism, meaning, how to create the swing window fun fold. The decorating is going to be up to you. I've done a lot of shortcuts. I have all my pieces cut out already because I know you would have fallen asleep by watching me do a lot of die cutting. So we're gonna jump in. You are going to want to create a card base and your base card is going to be a regular A2 size. I'm going to use whisper white, not whisper white. I keep calling it whisper white. I know it's basic white now. So I've got a piece of basic white. It is eight and a half by five and a half. So again, eight and a half, five and a half, half, half a sheet of regular cardstock. And I've scored this at four and a quarter. So if I bring back in my scoring board, you're going to see where I scored it. And I'm just making a regular A2 card. So I scored it right at four and a quarter. Now, you can use regular cardstock or you can use thick cardstock. It is completely up to you. And I'll tell you some tips and tricks of both of those as we go through. I am just going to score my piece of paper. And now I have my basic card base. The next thing that I need to do is I need to determine what shape I am going to use to cut the front, the window. And for those of you who know me well, you know that I absolutely love the rectangle stitched framelits. There are 13, I think, dies in this set. And I've used these quite a bit. I chose one of those dies and it is this die here. Let's see if I can tell you which one it is in order. I'm not gonna lie before I tell you. It is the third largest in case you want to use a die like this. But before we do any die cutting, I want to tell you a couple of things to keep in mind when you're choosing your die. 
you don't want your die to be incredibly large. I'm gonna bring out the largest rectangle die that I have. This is one that I would not want to use. And I'm gonna tell you two reasons why I would not use this. One is that if I were to cut the rectangle out, the piece that would be remaining would be really, really thin. So the, the actual frame would not be this width, it would be more the width of what you're seeing as white only. That's not gonna be enough. You need more than that. The second thing is we're going to be using tear and tape. And tear and tape is about a quarter of an inch wide. And again, if I use a really, really big die, I am not going to have a quarter of an inch in width in the area where I need to put my tear and tape. So don't use anything that is going to leave you with a very thin border. So the third largest rectangle die is great. And I'm gonna bring back this card. This is also a great option, a circle that is gonna give you a nice border because that's also gonna give the frame some strength when you're, you're gonna be pulling the, the front of the card open. So don't use anything that is really small. So the first thing you're going to do after you've decided what die it is that you're going to use is you're going to open up your card completely, put your die on the side where you're going to make the cut and then run that through your die cutting machine. I suggest that you think about rectangles or squares, circles, ovals, um, triangles, anything that's geometric for this. Some labels would work really well also. And if you have a punch rather than a die, you can use that as well. So if you have a big circle punch and you want to do a circle in the middle, that would work as well. All right, so through the magic of television, I have already cut out that rectangle. And that's what this is going to result in. I have my cut. Don't throw this away. This is going to come in handy because we're gonna use this if you want to reinforce the front of your window a little bit, okay? So I'm just gonna put that piece off to the side and now I'm going to score, not score, I'm going to burnish. I am going to fold the card and give that a nice burnish. And I am ready for the next step. And that next step is adding the fun fold piece, the piece that actually is going to make the window move. I've chosen to use designer series paper. And the reason I chose to use designer series paper, and I'm going to tell you what you, if you have, um, haven't have cut it, if you want to cut it while I'm talking about the paper, I chose designer series paper rather than cardstock because there are several layers in here. And if I had used cardstock, which I could, it would be really thick. So I put, I chose a piece of um, designer series paper and that needs to be cut to six and three quarters by five and a quarter. If you are using a piece that has a design, you need to think about the way that that design is flowing. So this piece is six and three quarters this way, five and a quarter this way. So if I were using a piece that had a design like flowers, I want the flowers to show vertically. So my vertical side is gonna be the five and a quarter. I'm going to make three score lines on this piece. And I'm, I've decided for the card that I'm making, let me show you the one that I did. I'm actually going to use the other side of the paper. So if you look at the card that I made, and let me show you the other side of this, this is the side that I originally used. I'm just gonna change it up a little bit. So I'm using the other side of the paper. All right, the first score line we need to do is at one and a quarter. So you're gonna put your piece in so that you've got the six and three quarters horizontal. You're gonna go at one and a quarter and you're going to score. You're gonna go one inch over to two and a quarter and you're going to score. 
And then there's going to be one more score line on this, which is going to be at three and five eighths. So three and five eighths is going to be between three and a half and three and three quarters. So right in at three and five eighths, you're going to do a nice score line. I finally broke down and I ordered a Simply Scoring board from Stampin' Up. So the next time that I do a video, you probably will see that. But I do want to give an ode to this scoring board that I've used forever and a day. I love it. It's super great for travel. I don't know if it's still on the market, but um, it's really, really nice. But I know I'm gonna love my Stampin' Up one too. All right, now we're gonna fold this in a very particular way. A mountain fold means the fold is coming toward me. A valley fold means the fold is going away from me. And let's look at what we're doing. So that first fold, when I call it a mountain fold, that's gonna be this fold. It's gonna be going away from me. The second fold is a mountain fold. And then the third one is a valley fold. I'm gonna start with the valley fold. I don't know why but I'm going to. So this is the one that I did at the three and five eighths. So I'm gonna pull that toward me and I'm just gonna get my designer series paper and do a nice burnish on that score line. The next two are gonna be coming toward me. So the next one I'm going at is the two and a quarter. And I'm just gonna fold that toward me and I'm gonna give that a nice little burnish. The last one, which was at one and a quarter, is also going to come toward me. And I'll give that a nice burnish as well. So what you're going to end up with is a piece that looks like this. OK, this is going to be the mechanism that we're going to attach to our card base that is going to allow that window to move when we open the front. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab the card base and the piece that I just did. And we're going to attach the designer series paper piece in two different ways. And I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do and we're gonna do this in a particular order. The first part we're going to put on is we're going to, if you hold up your piece of designer series paper, the back of the area that is to the right or is to the, the right of the, the score line that you did at three and five eighths, we're gonna actually adhere that to the back of the card. So again, let me show you. We are adhering this piece to the back of the card. And I'm going to use Tombow for this. And when I put it on here, my, my goal is, I'm not looking at the left. I really don't care about the left. I care about the top, the right side and the bottom. And I'm gonna try and get about, about even all the way around. And if you don't, don't worry, not a big deal. I find it easy to hold this piece of paper when I'm putting the glue on, whatever is easy for you. You don't need a lot. Just try to get some around the edges, and a little bit in the middle. And then I'm gonna stand up because I want to kind of look down. For me, it's easier for me to actually move the card like this and to hold the designer series paper like this. And again, I'm only focused on what now I'm looking at as the top and the sides. And I'm just trying to get those about evenly spaced. I don't care what this is doing. I'm just looking at those sides right now. And that's just a little extra piece of paper. There we go, okay? So that's step number one to attach the designer series paper. I'm gonna put my glue away for right now. I'm not gonna need that for a couple minutes. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to attach this piece. So if I'm looking at the designer series paper, it's this piece, the first one on the left, we need to attach that to the front of the card. And when we do that, what's gonna happen is when we open that front card, this piece is going to move. I do recommend that if you have tear and tape, that you use that on 
this part of the card. The stronger you make this here, the better it's going to be. You can use Tombow. I don't want you to think you can't, um, but you're gonna have to let that sit for just a couple minutes. Now, a couple things, and bear with me for a minute. You need to think about the shape that you have in your die cut when you're doing the attaching of the, the piece to the front of the card. And it's probably easy for me just to, to do this rather than to talk about it. One of the things that I had mentioned at the beginning was the size of the die. Look at how much room I have here to get that on. I've got a nice wide space where I can actually put the piece on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of the, um, the tear and tape right at the edge of the designer series paper. And then I'm going to put a little bit right up here on the corner. All right. And I do not want to get that tear and tape past that first fold line. I want this to be completely free. And I do not want, let me show you, I do not want to get tear and tape much beyond the bottom of the designer series paper. Because if you look at this, when this is on, I don't want any adhesive here. That's gonna mess up the mechanism. So let's just do this. Let me do it, let me not talk about it. I'm gonna take the tear and tape and I am going to get as close as I can to the edge of that designer series paper. And I'm just gonna put a nice strip down. And let me find my little snips. And I will just cut that off. I know it says tear, but I prefer to cut. So if I fold this over, because this is eventually what we're going to do, you can't see that tape. If I put some tape again, right here on the bottom and try to get it over to the edge, but I need to be super careful that I'm not going past that fold. So let me show you, that's not going past the fold. And when I fold this over, I'm also not going to see it. I don't see where that tape is. I'm going to do one more on the top. So as you're doing this, and I can tell you this from experience, just take a pause and look at the shape of the die that you're using and make sure that when you take that tear and tape and you put it on, that it's not going to interfere with what you're doing. And that's going to be perfectly fine. All right, so once you have that tape on, you want to fold your paper like this. You want to have it so that the first and second creases are showing, those two score lines are showing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the wax paper off and I'm going to literally just fold that over and put that directly on. And sometimes the challenge with tear and tape is not getting it down where you need it, it's getting the wax paper off. But the take your pick tool I have found is a really great way to just start that wax paper and then you can take it off. Now again, you could use combo or another kind of adhesive, it will work. I'm a righty, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm holding that piece down and I am just going to give that a nice burnish with my finger. Okay. And that's our mechanism. We're going to add to it, but that's the mechanism that is going to open the card. Now, again, you've got options. This could have been cardstock. This could have been designer series paper. It's really up to you as far as what you want to do. And I'm gonna come back over here and show you with the circle, the exact same thing. When I put the tear and tape, I put it right down at the bottom and then I put it 
so that it went up the sides and the circle gave me plenty of room to do what I needed to do. So the exact same thing, just a different shape. Okay, now the world opens up and you can do pretty much anything you would like on the front. I'm going to mimic pretty much, not everything, but I'm going to mimic some of the things that I did on this card and I will talk about them. You have many options as you can see on this card. And when we're done with me replicating the card that I want to show you, I wanna give you a couple of tips if you're using circles um, that you can also think about. So one of the things that I told you was that it would be a really good idea to keep the piece that you had when you cut out the front. This can help reinforce part of the front of your card. And it can also give a little bit more stability to that window that's gonna be moving around. If I flip this over, I don't know if you can see without me bending it, this was a piece of white cardstock that I started with. It was the piece that was cut out from the middle. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. I'm gonna use this piece to strengthen my card. And what I'm gonna do now is figure out what do I want to put on my window? What kind of decorations do I want to have? Well, when I cut out my piece of designer series paper, and you'll remember, you started with a six and three quarters by five and a quarter. If you cut that straight across, you're gonna have plenty of leftover designer series paper from the piece that you started with. This was from the piece that I started with. And I just grabbed that same die that I used to cut out the middle and I cut out my designer series paper. And I thought, why not? I've got this extra from when I cut out the card. I've got this extra from when I cut out my designer series paper. So why don't I just put the two together? So I'm literally going to just glue these together. This is exactly what I did on the first card. And by the way, this is the Chic Specialty Designer Series paper. It is unbelievable. I've already ordered more because I know I can't live without having some more because I actually held my breath and then I cut it. I cut the paper as you can see. And I'm sure you're like me. I've got so many packages of paper that are just sitting around doing nothing because I don't want to open them because they're just too pretty. Well, that's kind of silly. So all I did here is I added the designer series paper to the top of that piece of white cardstock. And now I have what I'm going to use for my window. So I'm going to attach this piece. And what I wanna end up with is this started, this one started just like I am doing the other one. I'm gonna attach it. Now, look at where that's attached. It is only attached to this part of the fun fold. What does that mean? It's only attached to this part of the fun fold. If you attach it anywhere else, you are going to interfere with what you're trying to do. So the best way that I have found to do this is to close your card, put your adhesive only, I'm opening this for a reason, only between those two score lines. And then you're gonna fit this in like a little puzzle piece. You're gonna kind of hold it up on the right and just put it right straight down and it will fit perfectly into that window. So I just described what I'm gonna do. Now let me do what I'm gonna do. I'm going to use the tear and tape again on this. You don't have to, you can use whatever you like. If you use the tear and tape, um, you are not gonna have as much forgiveness if you need to move your piece when you set it down. But because it's pretty much like a puzzle piece, you should not have a problem. You definitely can use Tombow in here or whatever kind of adhesive you like. Um, snail would work really well also. But 
again, this is going to get some play. It's definitely going to be moving around. And for me, I think that the tear and tape is, is an option. I'm going to give that a little bit of a burnish. Sometimes if you burnish this and then you just have a better opportunity to get that sort of wax paper off. Yay. Whoever invented this tear and tape is just beyond brilliant. All right, I'm gonna stand up again. And what I have in my right hand is the piece that is going to go in. And I'm gonna hold that card down flat. At the end, it's really not gonna to matter too much what orientation I have, although I don't know why I want that green snowflake showing a little bit more on the bottom left. So I'm gonna bring this piece in and I'm just lining that up right as a little puzzle piece. And I'm just gonna put it right down and give that a nice little burnish. And now when I open the card, that piece is gonna be moving around. So that's the basic mechanism to make the swing window fun fold card. The rest of what I'm going to do and I will talk through as I finish the, the decorating on this card includes the decorating because there are a couple of tips and tricks I can tell you. And I also want to talk about reinforcing the card. So let's talk about reinforcing because that's kind of the next step that I want to take on this. Depending upon what weight of cardstock you have on the front and how much the die cut out of that front piece of paper, your card is either gonna have a lot of stability. This one has a lot of stability because the circle's fairly small or not as much stability. And this isn't a wimpy card, it's just, because there's not a lot of area on that frame, it's not completely sturdy. What I did on this card is I tried to make that a little bit more sturdy by putting some additional pieces of cut cardstock around the opening. And you can definitely do that. Um, and I'm gonna design this second card a little bit differently than the first card, but it will end up being pretty much the same thing. So I decided that instead of two frames on the second card, I did two frames on the first, I used the gorgeous gold paper that comes with the Texture Chic collection, the suite. And you've seen this done before where you take two concentric dies and you actually cut out paper. So I use the, the die that I use to cut out the middle. Then I use the next largest die and I put those two together. So I made them look like this and put a little bit of washi tape on. I ran that through and that's how I got my gold border. And then to do the second piece, I took a piece of soft succulent and I made a bigger border by using two other frames. Well, on the one that I'm doing now, I did it a little differently. I used the smaller die, the one that I used to cut out the middle, and the largest die that I'm going to use, and I cut out a frame. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive and I'm gonna go ahead and put that right around the front. And that's gonna do two things in my mind. I like frames. I think they add just a really nice border visually. This one is gonna be more than visual. This is going to be somewhat going toward the structure of the card and making it a little bit more sturdy, but it's up to you. And if you use a smaller die, you might not really even need to do anything. If you choose to put a frame on, I strongly recommend that you hold your card like this when you do that, because this is going to help you not get glue 
where you don't want the glue to go. And it's also going to help you visually see where that piece lines up. And it should fall into place without a problem. And then you can give it a nice little burnish and you've got your frame. All right. Then the world opens. And I can tell that is giving me some more stability. It's not as flimsy as it was. So that's one way if you've got a, a thinner frame. And then you can design however you would like. I went a little bit nutty with some of the elements that are in the textured chic um, suite, the dies. I'm warning you, if you buy them, you will use them a lot because they are unbelievable. So I use them a lot. I love this little background. And what I also love about it is because I'm gonna be adding elements in the front, I can do whatever I want to to it. So I am just gonna cut this up a little bit. And now I have two pieces that I can put together that came from that die. If you do use this die and you use the gold paper or anything else when you're putting it together and then you wanna put it onto your project, I also recommend that you use some reverse tweezers. They're really great for holding your piece. You don't need a lot of glue, just here and there, dab it on. And then with something intricate like this, what I love to do is to get a scrap piece of paper that becomes my blotter. And I'm just gonna blot that off. And then I'll come in and I'm just gonna add that piece now, the tip that I have for you, one of them, is when you are adding to the front of your card, when you're adding the decorations, be mindful of where you are adding them. For example, I purposely made sure that I did not go outside the area of my die cut on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, that's fine because that's not going to interfere with me opening up the card, but I don't want anything to catch on the right side. So you need to keep the right side and probably two thirds or so of the top and bottom on the right inside your die cut. Otherwise you're pretty open to do what you want to do. And I'm just gonna add a couple of elements to this. This is definitely gonna look a little bit different than the other one that I did because my background is um, a little lighter. So I'm going to be interested to see what this one looks like against the other one and see which one I prefer. So again, I'm just blotting that off a little bit and I'm going to add this. This is completely random. The other one that I did, I was a little bit more thoughtful in how I was putting things together. And then I have also pre-cut a lot of pieces. These come from the chic dies. And one of the dies that is in the set cuts the largest snowflake that's actually part of the designer series paper. So I ended up using some of those elements and I'm just gonna add those on as well. And I also have created some other pieces that I will layer on. And I'll do that in just a minute. Um, I ended up stamping some of the snowflakes that are in the texture chic set. This is the season of chic, and this is the snowflake that I used. I used um, pool party and soft succulent which are two colors in the designer series paper. And then, yep, I used one of those stitched rectangles to cut that out. Went back in and I thought, I've still got some designer series paper left from that initial piece that I cut. So I used another one of the rectangles and cut that out. 
And then honestly, I wanted a fun little saying on the front of this card. So I grabbed the penguin place, which is just fun, fun. And be cool, be chill, be merry. How much more fun can you get on that? And I layered those together. I'll show you what I did on those in just a minute. And I added those elements. And I'll come back and I'll, I'll do that in a second while we're talking about how to finish up um, these cards. So I don't want to simply glue while I am talking about these cards. I want to talk about a couple other elements to think about when you're making these. And that is if you put a lot of design on the front, you probably want a place where you can put your message. So you've got some options. You can use the back of your card. You can use the inside of your card. And what I did on this card is I used another of the rectangle dies. This is the one that I used to cut out this white piece is the fourth largest. It's a little bit smaller than the piece that I used to cut out the window. I mimicked that for the card that I'm making right now with a little twist. And here's the twist. When I made the original card and I cut out my gold frame, I had this piece left over. Don't throw away scraps because you're going to find a use for them. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to use this and I'm gonna put that on the inside here and then I will put the white over the top. When you are doing this, be very aware that this is not a normal size on the inside of your card. You don't have an awful lot of room to put a piece that would be used for you to put your sentiment, but you definitely can add a piece back there and make it look very decorative. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add this really quick. And then I'm gonna bring in the piece that I did with the circle and talk about that a little bit. So that has one very different element than what we have been doing. But just like many, many designs, there are so many options with this. And I think it is a very, very fun fold to use and it looks much more complicated than it really is. There's some things to take into consideration when you're doing it, but once you've made a few and tried a couple of different shapes, you're going to see that there are a lot of options. So what I'm doing here is I am just adding in that piece that is going to be for my sentiment and I'm doing my best to line that up with the piece that I cut because they are the same size rectangles and it's really not gonna make a heck of a lot of difference except I'm gonna know and they look like they're pretty good. So I am not going to bore you to tears watching me add the pieces to the top of this card. You can see how the mechanism works. I eventually will add pieces that I have cut out from the snowflakes, from the elements that I created separately. I love the grunge look that they will incorporate when I'm done and they will look something like this. So you'll notice that I layered the three pieces and I purposely put them on different diagonals. I added the snowflakes. I wanted that succulent, soft succulent to be really visible. So I added the white behind that and then put some more elements on the bottom. And then the final touch, because I thought it needed a little something something, is a double bow. And that's made from the gold twine that comes in the, let's see, the Simply Elegant trim. There's gold and there's silver. So I did a double bow and I also put some white Baker's twine in there, tied that all together. And let me just make one comment on any kind of embellishment that you'll add. Similar to what I was talking about of being mindful about where the corners are, 
be mindful about where you're putting that final element. So if you look at where I put that bow, I made sure that when I open the card that the bow is not getting hit. But I do have the capability of making it go off the edge on the left to give it a little bit of a kind of an isolated bling so that it will show. And one other thing, a great adhesive for bows is shimmery crystal effects. What I did to adhere this bow, and it's going nowhere. I'm not a fan of blue dots. I hate to say that if you are a fan, I'm not. Um, this will do a much better job in keeping any kind of bulky piece attached to your card. And all you need to do is put a couple of drops on the, on the bow, the actual tied part. And then if you put that down wherever it is that you want it to be attached, grab a little block or something that has some weight and just set that right down on top, leave it alone for a couple minutes. And when you come back, it will be attached. And the nice thing about it is it dries clear. It also is very, very sturdy. So my tip on, on the bow. Now, let me move to the circle piece because there are a couple of differences. And I just want to talk through these very quickly. Um, you'll see the similarities and the differences. Similarities, obvious. It works the same way. It is a, um, a sliding window fold, fun fold. So we're doing the same thing. Designer series paper, designer series paper. Obviously, the die cuts are a different shape. I layered what I did at the end on the circle. I'm not done with this. I'm going to put some bling on it. But how did I start this? Let me show you. I'm going to show you with a different color cardstock. This is real red, and this is um, paper from the fall catalog. I want to find the, the name of it because I love it. It came back. It was uh, on sale last year. It is called Painted Christmas. It is so fun. It has great, great patterns, and I'm going to be using that for some Christmas cards. So you'll see that I put the designer series paper on the front as well as on the inside. When I had my initial piece of designer series paper, and you're going to remember that it was six and three quarters by five and a quarter, I ended up with extra. I cut this from the extra. And I cut it at two and an eighth in width because that's going to be about half of what I need. So here's my piece of two and an eighth. Here are my tips for when you want to use um, circle dies or other dies. Put the designer series paper on your cardstock before you run this through your machine. Why? This is thin it is not going to interfere with you running it through your die cutting machine. The other is, unless you are a genius, there is no way under God's blue sky, if you cut a hole here and then you try to match it on a single sheet, you are not gonna get it in the same place. You're not. So just let that go because it won't happen. So what I suggest you do is if you're going to, regardless of the shape, I could put a square in here. I could put a triangle in here. I could do anything. If you want that piece of designer series paper on the front, first thing I would do is put a little bit of adhesive and you need it on the top. You need it on the left side, whatever side is gonna be closest to your fold. And since I'm on the back, it looks opposite, but trust me, and on the bottom. And then I'm going to put this piece where I want it to go. And I'm just trying to get the border on the top and the bottom and the left about the same. I did not put adhesive on here because I might wanna use what's gonna be cut out. And then I'm going to take my dies, whatever shape, I'm going to pull out a circle one just as an example, and I'm going to try to get it as centered as I want it. So something like that. 
and then I'm going to run it through my die cutter. And again, when you are putting your um, parent tape on, if you do do a circle or any other shape, just pause and think about where you can put that tear and tape before you, before you put it down so you're not interfering with the mechanism. So those are my tips. Um, I really, really hope that you enjoy making these kinds of cards. They are incredibly fun. They have infinite possibilities. And I really believe that you are going to find some very fun designs that are going to just impress the heck out of people. You know, this, they both look like they're complicated. They're not. They're not. And they will, I think, bring some real joy to people when you give them to your friends and family for different occasions. So please share what you make. I would love to see it. And until next time, happy stamping.